Alright, so this is the second part of the kinetic typography tutorials, and uh, this time we're going to be looking at three-dimensional text. In the first part we looked at just two-dimensional text and animating that with keyframes, but as you can see here we're using some camera movements and moving about in 3D space. So we have tortillas sound delicioso. Okay, now go away. And that is what we're going to do. We're going to create this same composition. So again, new composition. And we're going to make a shorter version of what you just saw. And just tortillas. Sound. Now I'll go ahead and kind of position those where I think they should go right now. So tortillas, scale it up, move it on over sound is going to go right there and we'll select good move that down for now so sound let's go ahead and hit R for rotation change that to negative 90 now we'll go ahead and position it over the O scale it up move it over the O and one thing that's crucial to something like this where everything is kind of playing off of the other text is to make sure you click on parent and we're going to parent sound to tortillas so now if you move tortillas around sound is going to move right along with it and that will actually be true for any of the different settings you have for tortillas so now we can move sound wherever we want on tortillas, but whenever we move tortillas, it basically locks sound in place and moves it along with it. So that is parenting. And if you don't have this, right click on the bar right here and hopefully you get columns and you just hit parent, make sure that is checked and you should be able to do that. So we'll do the same thing with good, parent it to tortillas. And actually, let's move sound back into place. Move tortillas down, move good, up to where the, the D is in sound. All right, so there are our three different elements. So let's get this going. The next thing you have to do is go to Layer, New, and Camera. I normally choose 35 millimeter. Uh, that's just what I've found from different tutorials that most people use. I don't mess with any of the different settings in here and just hit OK. So now we have a camera set up and we can adjust what we're seeing in several different ways. Go up here to your top toolbar and click and hold and you'll see this little pop out menu. The first thing we want to look at is orbit camera tool. And you should see a little circle with an arrow around it. Go ahead and just click on your composition and move it around. No, nothing is happening right now, and that's because we haven't turned on three-dimensional layers for our text layers. The way we do that is over here in the toolbar, we can see 3D layer, allow this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. Make sure that is checked, and so now it is. So okay, it's already orbited a little bit, and we'll work with what we have right now. So let's go ahead and move tortillas up into the middle. And we'll go ahead and hit the stopwatch for point of interest, position, and Z rotation. Sometimes you'll mess with the X and Y rotation, but you'll kind of figure that out as you go. If, if you see that an animation you're trying to do isn't sticking, that means that the X and Y rotation or the orientation is being manipulated. So let's go ahead and move it a little bit right now. And that's where we're going to start off. Go ahead, 15 frames, and then rotate it the other way. And so now we can see that only adjusted position. And that's moving the position of the camera and not the position of any of our text layers. So we'll go to that 15 frame keyframe. And this is where we'll rotate to see sound. So go ahead and create a keyframe for Z rotation. Move ahead 15 frames to one second. Then in Z rotation, we're just gonna type 90. And all right, that was actually the wrong way. So we'll go back in, type negative 90. All right, so now that is closer to what we want, 
but it's not quite in the right place. So what we're gonna have to do is go back to that previous keyframe, put one on there for point of interest, go to where the new keyframe is, go up to your camera, and you can also bring up your camera tools by hitting C, and we're going to use the track X and Y camera tool. And what that does is basically it just goes wrong along the X and Y axis. It doesn't rotate anything, it just moves the point of interest and the position of the camera. So we'll bring sound down into the middle, and let's just kind of scrub that through. So we have tortillas, rotates, sound, and then good's gonna be our final thing. We'll go ahead and move forward 15 frames, hit the keyframe for both point of interest and position, as well as Z rotation. And I'm just gonna do kind of the same effect I did with the clip that I showed you. And so in order to do that, we're going to bring good down, and hit R after selecting the good layer. For Z rotation, switch it to negative 90, and that's gonna square it up for us. Put that right underneath the D on sound, and scale it up just a little bit. Move it over. And what I had to do earlier was go into sound and actually create my own D. So I basically took out the D, I duplicated the previous sound layer, and by doing that, you just hit Command D. So here you see Sound 2. Double click, switch that to D, click on it again, and move it over into position. All right, so now because that was parented to tortillas, it's gonna move right along, just like the other one has so far. So here we want the D to kind of rotate. So we're going to click on Y rotation, give that a keyframe, move forward 15 seconds, and change that to 90. Uh, moving up 15 frames, we're gonna go ahead and click C and get the orbit tool for the camera. And we're gonna bring it so that good is now visible gonna hit it again for X and Y tracking and bring good right into the middle and now that we have that we can animate the D the way that we want it to look we need to click on position and R for Y rotation switch that to 90 and there's our D move it up move it back and move it down to about where we need it to be. And now we can just go to good, double click, and take out the D. So now that we know how we want good to look, we'll move back to the previous keyframe, because the D that we're going to use uh, is where it should be right there. And so on D, we'll go ahead and hit P, give it a keyframe right there. I already added one for where it'll be next. And we're also gonna to need to change the rotation. That's the Y rotation. So we'll add a keyframe there. Now we'll go ahead and move forward to where good's actually going to be. And we'll move the D up. That's the Z position. Move the X position over. Now we'll go down here, change Y rotation, negative 90. Move it back, down and over and so that looks pretty good so now it's going to pop up there and move into where good is so to make this really work we want to get rid of the d in good so just double click take out the d and there we go so now it's going to pop up there to good the way that i kind of mesh everything together is by adding opacity and making things fade in and fade out. That way you don't see all this down here. So we have sound and toward till, and that, that doesn't look very good. So we'll go back to the beginning. And first we're gonna get rid of good. So go ahead and change the opacity, hit the stopwatch, change that to zero, and then move forward in our keyframes to about where it's gonna 
come in. And I usually choose in between the two keyframes that actually matter for a layer. Create a new keyframe, add zero opacity. And once it's all the way up there, there we go. So that good's just gonna fade in right there at the end. All right, so good is taken care of. Now we need to adjust sound. And remember, we really only have S-O-U-N right there. We'll take care of that in a moment. Hit stopwatch for opacity. Take it down to zero. And we'll go ahead and see where this starts. So the keyframe's right there. Right before that keyframe of the camera move, we'll create a keyframe for opacity. Then a little bit past, we will take opacity all the way up to 100. So now we'll do the same for D. And you can check that by clicking on D and then hitting T. And see what it did there was it actually put in, it pasted the uh, attributes right where my cursor was. So I need to take those all the way back to the beginning. So now that fades in also. And that's looking better. So now to take out tortillas. So let's move to this third camera movement. Click on the tortillas layer, opacity, hit the stopwatch. Take it down to zero. Move back to the second camera movement. Actually, we'll move to where sound is all the way in. And we'll bring it all the way up to 100. So as tortillas starts to rotate out, it also fades out. And so now we still have sound just hanging around. And we can fix that by creating a keyframe there creating a keyframe just a little bit before and then going to the final keyframe and changing the opacity to zero. So there we go, everything is in place and working properly. 3D layers are moving around. Again, to kind of cut the work area, you can hit N and that'll go wherever your current time indicator is and got the timeline off there. So we'll do a RAM preview. So here's our RAM preview, and it's looking all right. I mean, you can imagine having a sound clip in there and working with that to make this fit exactly what you need. The main thing to remember here is always add keyframes, especially when you're moving the camera around. And uh, the command Z or undo, that's gonna be your best friend here as you're, you'll, you'll probably accidentally move some things around that you don't intend to. So we talked about three-dimensional text, we talked about parenting elements to each other, and we also talked about using a camera to manipulate objects in 3D space. So hopefully you learned a little bit from this tutorial and can now really get your text animated and looking pretty cool.